Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday, November 15th, 2013, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here is a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, what does the Obamacare fix mean for your health? Then, how cyber attacks are surpassing physical terrorism. And could killer robots be outlawed? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. My buddy, Dan. Don't say buddy! That means friendship. You're not allowed to shake hands in most public schools. First dodgeball, now no running, now no shaking hands. Don't say dad, don't say buddy, don't say gun, don't say bayonet. Man, this guy's an extremist. Uh, we fumbled the rollout on this health care law. And we should have done a better job getting that right on day one. Not on day 28 or on day 40. Well, that was Captain Obvious confirming what we already know. And due to the fumbling rollout of the marketplace, Obama has reversed course. Now he is going to let insurance providers continue to write their insurance policies, even if they don't meet the minimum standards that are set by this problem-plagued law. He's going to let that happen for another year. But McClatchy reports that this fix could make matters even worse. The issue with extending existing policies for another year has the potential to destabilize the market, resulting in higher premiums. Now, insurance companies have no idea what's going to be the law tomorrow, next month, or even next year. Uh, the problem is that companies base their rates for 2014 on certain assumptions, including that plans bought after 2010 or plans that had been substantially changed would be canceled. So if more customers are now allowed to keep those plans, companies are probably going to have to raise the premiums and offer fewer choices. Nicholas Bagley is a health policy expert, and he said Obama's fix raised more questions than answers, from the effect on premiums to the ability of insurance commissioners to swiftly approve previously canceled plans. And he said it remains to be seen whether the effort is even legal. And as Mike Adams points out, the fact that Obamacare just rolled out yesterday and said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and let this be the law. He's just acting like a dictator and just saying that I have the power to do this, when in fact there is no power in the presidential office to do that. According to Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution, it demands that the president take care that laws be faithfully executed. So at this point, the problem with Obama announcing that he will allow the insurance companies to avoid canceling the further policies and write policies that don't adhere to the law, it's just Obama doesn't even have the power to do this. So at this point, insurance companies have no idea what to believe, nor do the consumers who are shopping for the plans. And not to mention the fact that there is no mechanism in place that will force insurance companies to reinstate the policies that they have already canceled. So do you really think that these insurance companies are gonna give people who they've canceled, give them back their plans and say, oh, you know what, you can go ahead and keep on paying $50 because you know you had a great plan that you were really comfortable with. Sorry we canceled it. No, they're not gonna do that. And there's not, no law or there's no mechanism in place that's saying you need to reinstate those people. So the people that have had their plans canceled are basically screwed. And of course, the people that haven't had theirs canceled yet are going to be able to keep them for the next year. So as you can see, this is creating all sorts of problems. What a mess. It's going to be an even bigger mess if you can believe it. <laughs> but one of those people who uh, had his plan canceled is Dan Bongino. He came on the Alex Jones Show today to talk about Obamacare and what it has done to his family. And this is someone who is a former member of the Secret Service's Presidential Protection Division. Yeah, that's. I mean, this isn't the first time, though, either. You had the exemption for Congress. You had the out-of-pocket requirements he waived. You had the income requirements he waived. You had the employer mandate he waived. I mean, this is the odd part about this, this thick sense of, of, of politics on the side where they say, oh, it's the law of the land, and then they turn around five minutes later and they ignore the law of the land, which the law of the land, I would argue, initially wasn't constitutional, but as an extra slap in the face, even once they declared constitutional what wasn't constitutional, he unconstitutionally violated it. If that's like making your head spin right now. Well, terrorism from the days of yore that brought you the indefinite detention via the NDAA or the Patriot Act or the gropey hands of the TSA, that kind of terrorism is no longer trendy. 
Now, according to the FBI, the new terror is cyber attacks. During his first testimony as the new FBI director, James Comey told Congress that while the threat of traditional terrorist strikes is now lower than it was before 9-11, the potential threat from cyber attacks continues to rise. That's where the bad guys will go, Comey said. There are no safe neighborhoods. All of us are neighbors online. Comey's comments were echoed by Rand Beers, the acting secretary for the Department of Homeland Security with both men pushing Congress to expand the government's power to gain access to data held by privately owned companies. So expect to see more Stuxnet style cyber attacks in order so that they can overarch their powers even more and steal your civil liberties through either the new TPP agreement that Obama's trying to fast track or the kill switch plan. Well, because the cyber attacks are likely to become that primary domestic threat within the next decade, uh, the DHS has this internet kill switch plan, and it's no secret, we've been reporting on it for years, but now a federal court has demanded that DHS reveal its protocol for use of the internet shutdown plan. Now, in 2012, Barack Obama signed an executive order that allowed the DHS to establish and implement control over the country's wired and wireless communications, including the internet, in emergency situations. Even the privately owned communication systems in the country, including internet service providers such as Time Warner, Verizon, and Comcast. Well, an attorney for the Electric Privacy Information Center who had read earlier versions of this kill switch protocol said that the previous orders did not give the DHS the authority over private and commercial networks. She said that is a new authority. Google announced yesterday that U.S. government spying has actually increased triple-fold since 2010, and now the Silicon Valley nerds are fighting back. They've Burned by the disclosures that they've cooperated with the U.S. surveillance programs, Google, Facebook, and Yahoo are going to use a harder-to-crack code that the U.S. government says won't be easily broken until 2030. The companies will shield their networks and online consumer data from unauthorized U.S. spying by protecting user email and social media posts with strengthened encryption. So now while the NSA may find ways around those barriers, the companies say they have to assure users that their online connections are secure. But don't think it's because they care about you. Google, Yahoo, and Facebook generated $44.4 billion in advertising revenue so far in just 2013, in part by mining users' private data. And an August 14th analysis uh, by Forrester Research found that the U.S. cloud computing industry could lose as much as $180 billion by 2016 due to the spying disclosures. So that's what this is really all about. It's not that they're trying to protect your data. They're trying to protect your, their money that they earn from your data that they sell. So but one area I do not mind where the police are spying on the Internet activity is cracking down on child porn because you're disgusting and you need to be stopped. But in some good news, this week nearly 400 children were rescued in an extraordinary international child pornography bust. 348 adults were arrested after a three-year undercover investigation by the Canadian police. They, uh, their investigation revealed an entire child movie production and distribution company operating via the website azoffilms.com. Police seized over 45 terabytes of data, hundreds of thousands of images and videos of horrific sexual acts against very young children. It was a $4 million business distributed over 50 countries. And what was most alarming, according to the head of the Toronto Sex Crimes Unit, was that many of the arrests were of people who worked with or closely interacted with children, like 40 school teachers, nine doctors and nurses, six law enforcement personnel, nine pastors and priests, and three foster parents. Police said the children were rescued from child exploitation, but they did not give more details. So glad to see that they're finally cracking down on these huge sex, child sex trafficking, sex slavery. This is one of the good things that we have about being able to police the internet. That, that will be my only thing that I say, okay, fine, that's, that's okay, you can do that. Now stick around because coming up ne next, David Knight's report on the spy in a bag, 
How did he get himself padlocked in that bag? Find out right after this. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Well, Berlin has suspended the purchase of armed drones, saying that it categorically rejects illegal killing. The government says that before acquiring the remote-controlled craft, it must thoroughly examine all associated civil and constitutional guidelines and ethical questions. German defense minister had announced to the German public in May that talks were underway to discuss the purchase of U.S. Predator drones and Israeli Heron drones. But now they're not going to do that because they got to check the constitutionality of it. But although the German government has criticized Washington's use of drones to carry out strikes, Amnesty International has accused Berlin of working together with the USA and its drone program in Pakistan. And not to mention the fact that the U.S. just opened a drone facility in Germany last month and unmanned aerial vehicles have been granted authority to traverse German airspace. So basically, I'll believe it when I see it, Germany. We know you're not going to let the rest of the world get killer drones and you're just going to fall back. But talks to outlaw other killer robots are also taking place today giving another glimmer of uh, humanity out there, people thinking that maybe the killer robots aren't such a good idea. But they could be made illegal if campaigners in Geneva succeed in persuading a UN committee to open an investigation into their development. People initially accused us of being in some kind of fantasy world, but now they have realized that significant developments are already underway. This was Noelle Sharkey, who was a professor of artificial intelligence and robotics. She said, at the moment, we already have drones, which are supervised by humans. But what we are talking about, however, is fully automated machines that can select targets and kill them without any human intervention. And that is something that we should all be very worried about. The campaigners think that there's a well-founded fear that computer-controlled devices could go rogue, or be hacked, jammed, or copied by terrorists. And they also said we shouldn't hand over the decisions about whether something is right or wrong to machines. Now, so far, no country has admitted to developing this type of weaponry.
So no country has admitted to working on that kind of technology, but we already know who's working on it because our tax dollars pay for it. That's, I'm looking at you, DARPA and Boston Dynamics. Well, we already know that the, the elites are planning to merge together with machine and live forever in their new world order. But did you also know that they're planning to technocratize the economy? Going back to Patrick Wood, publisher, he's an economist, uh, renowned, exposed the trilaterals, co-wrote the book Trilaterals Over Washington with the icon Anthony C. Sutton, who blew skull and bones wide open with Charlotte Iserby. Uh, he joins us. Okay, so get into, we got up to Brzezinski, who he is, who David Rockefeller is. Tell us, explain technocracy, and then what's happening in our world. Americans don't ought to like communism. Well, explain what technocracy is. Communism by the elite, by another name, with them offshore exempt from it. Patrick Wood, break it down. Well, when I discovered technocracy as a historical study a few years ago, it really piqued my interest, and I said I had to go and research it uh, in depth. And I, I made some, you know, several trips to uh, secure original research uh, on technocracy. I found out that it had been skipped in the history books, primarily because at the time in the 30s, Randolph Hearst got so hacked off by being used by these people that he sent a memo out to all of his newspapers around the country and told them, basically, if you ever mention the word technocracy again, you are fired. And so there was no more articles on technocracy after that time, really. And so it was a little difficult going back and getting this information. But after I studied it enough, it really occurred to me that I needed to go back and read Zbigniew Brzezinski's book again in light of technocracy. And what I found out was, Alex, is that his writings lined up philosophically and, you know, idea for idea sort of thing with the doctrine and dogma that was presented in the 1930s. It was very radical back then. In fact, one prominent technocrat wrote a book, a public book, suggesting that President Roosevelt should, should declare himself dictator after his election so that he could implement technocracy back then. We can be thankful that he didn't take him up on that, but uh, life might be different today. Yeah. But when I read, went back and read Bozinski, uh again, I was shocked to realize that he was basically saying the same thing. And here's what's kind of ironic or strange. Brzezinski was at Columbia University at the time. Well, in 1932, technocracy as a movement was also housed in Columbia University. Even though the movement got kicked out, all of the professors that were part of it stayed on at Columbia. Most, many of them died there in their positions, you know, retired and, and passed. And so here's Brzezinski picking up the trail at the same university where it left off, basically spouting the same dogma. One phrase in particular from his book, one quote, I'd like to read it just because it will just stand your hair on end that Brzezinski understood this, but even back in 68 to 70. And I'll have to be the first to admit, Brzezinski was a brilliant man. I don't agree with him on anything he really did or said or wrote, but you have to give him credit for being a brilliant guy he foresaw the future back then. Of course, they went and made, manufactured the future after that. But here's what he wrote. The technotronic era, and that technotronic, by the way, is a knockoff for the word technocratic. So he quote, again, the technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values, Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date, complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities, close quote. Now, I remember that book being on the bookshelf when I was a small child, and by the time I was 10 and was able to read good, I tried to read it and didn't understand it. But I sat around the kitchen table hearing all this from my father growing up, and that's the internet. That's all of it. It was all built and designed to be this grid. So they've built a society to control us, and that's the nanny state. That's the 
close the green belt for no reason and control people, shut up checkpoints, tell your kids they can't play tag, say the state rules your kids. This is putting a grid in the name of keeping a safe in that's actually a grid of tyranny and control. Well, the, it's interesting that the, the, the documents from the early 1930s specified what needed to take place in order for technocracy to survive or to, to be, uh, you know, in, uh, implanted. One of the things, uh, because technocracy was energy-based, one of the main tenets of their philosophy was that the price-based economic system was going to be discarded, that was capitalism, of course, and it was going to be substituted by a system of energy credits or energy currency that would be used to uh, monitor all exchange of goods and services in the economy. And a carbon-based currency, we haven't seen that, of course, quite yet, but we see the push for carbon-based everything around the world. This is what sustainable development's about. This is what everything green is about. This is what uh, Agenda 21 is about. Uh, you get the idea. It's everywhere today. And in fact, there there are actually articles out in the last five years that are that are, that are openly discussing carbon currency, but it's really in kind of a, still in, in, a, in a minor. That's mode. right. And in England, they show the school kids a cartoon called Megaopolis, where the computer tells you when you can go outside. It tells you when you can eat. Everyone has their job in the technocracy. Uh, you're only allowed to have one child. This is the plan. So for folks out there, it's fun to know about football and what size you know, jock strap your favorite sports person wears for whatever reason. I'm being sarcastic. But but that doesn't matter. That's a diversion. You read these books written in the 1930s by Aldous Huxley, whose brother was a eugenicist and went on to found the transhumanist movement and head up the UN, UNESCO program and Agenda 21 and all of it that came out of the uh, a meeting in uh, 92. You really see it's all the same control freak scientific dictatorship system under different names. It's just that the brilliantly evil Brzezinski, uh, who believes in things beyond good and evil, foresaw the gestalt and got the real world manager, David Rockefeller, behind it. Because David Rockefeller, if you had to say one guy's king of the world... You'd have to say it was David Rockefeller. Not so much now, but he was the prime mover working 18 hours a day to bring this world government in. And now his people are in place everywhere. And he chose the Brzezinski model on record. And then he integrated it with eco-science eugenicist model. The injections and the additives to dumb us down. It's all White House science are on record. And you realize this is their military battle plan assaulting us. We've got some more news coming up, so stick around after the break. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. 
introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Well, China's leaders have decided to ease up on their one-child policy. The one-child policy was put in place in 1980 to tame a surging population, but it's been criticized for not only draining the labor pool of future worker drones, but also for forced abortions and sterilizations in order to meet family planning quotas. But just like Obama's illogical insurance fix, China will arbitrarily reform the one-child policy by allowing couples to have two children if one of the parents was an only child. So China also plans to abolish its controversial labor camp system, which will allow, uh, which allows police to imprison people in labor camps for up to four years without formal arrest or trial. America's dictator, however, has yet to relinquish his power to detain U.S. citizens indefinitely. Now, moving from one overbearing authoritarian government to another government who is refusing to obey authoritarian control. Thought Criminal Australia sent a blunt message to UN alarmists this week saying, no more socialism masquerading as environmentalism. The new government is led by a conservative-leaning prime minister, and it also explicitly declared that it would not make any payments or accept any liabilities as part of any potential new UN global warming agreement. That means Australia will refuse to play any role in a wealth transfer from rich countries to developing nations to pay them to decrease their carbon emissions. Now, while saying they will commit to reduce carbon emissions by 5%, leadership says it will review its position in 2015, reigning climate efforts in even further if UN global warming theories continue to be questionable. Conspiracy theorists. But even when faced with facts that conflict their official narrative, the establishment just continues to hold on to their tales. Well, three years after an MI6 codebreaker's body was found padlocked in a bag in an empty bathtub in an MI6 safe house, the London Metropolitan Police have ruled that it was an accident. Allow me to congratulate you on a brilliant bit of deduction. That's right. Move along. There's nothing to see here. But there is plenty to see here about how governments work. His body was found inside a zipped and padlocked bag in a bathtub. No palm prints were on the side of the bathtub. No traces of his DNA on the padlock outside of the bag. His cell phone was wiped clean that day. And his employer, MI6, that's British Intelligence, didn't report him missing for eight days, despite the fact that his body was in one of their safe houses just blocks away from their headquarters. And just last year, the coroner concluded that he probably was killed by another person. Coroner Fiona Wilcox said that it was, quote, a legitimate line of inquiry that other spies were involved in the death of Gareth Williams, 31, a member of the UK's Secret Intelligence Service, SIS, also known as MI6. But Metropolitan Police said he probably died accidentally on his own, rejecting conspiracy theories. His family said, if this wasn't the SIS and it was the Cray twins or someone else, you would be investigating. You would have gone into far more detail and there were some more details thrown in. He had $30,000 worth of unworn women's clothing, a bright red wig, and some suspicious sexual things there. But the coroner's investigation ruled that he was not gay, not a transvestite, 
Those things, I believe, were simply red herrings to distract people from what the real question is, and that is, how could he have gotten padlocked into the bag? The Press Association reported that a former parachute regiment reservist who specializes in rescuing people from confined spaces was unable to lock himself inside an identical bag. No palm prints were on the side of the bathtub, no traces of his DNA on the padlock outside of the bag. He said, I couldn't say it's impossible, but I think even Houdini would have struggled with this one. This is something we've seen not just in the UK, but frequently in the United States, that people who have sensitive information about government secrets or about the people who run the government somehow just mysteriously die or commit suicide, even though they didn't have any history of being suicidal, and even though the explanations for their deaths make absolutely no sense. Take the case of Gary Webb, investigative reporter who supposedly committed suicide by shooting himself in the head twice. It was merely coincidental that he had exposed CIA and Reagan administration using the crack cocaine drug trade to finance Nicaraguan Contras. Or take Deborah Jean Palfrey, the DC madam who had perhaps incriminating information on very powerful men in Washington. She said this on the Alex Jones show in 2008, shortly before she was suicided. I have no intention of letting anyone buy me off or make any kind of a deal with me. And you're I'm not planning to commit stuff. suicide. And I'm not planning to commit suicide either. But you want to put it on record that you're not planning to commit suicide? No, I'm not planning to commit suicide. I'm planning to go into court on April 7th if indeed we do have the trial and I plan on defending myself vigorously and I plan on exposing the government uh, in ways that, uh, you know, I do not think they want me to expose them. I want them to explain to me in open court why they came after me. Or take Aaron Schwartz, a feisty Internet freedom activist who led the defeat of CISPA. We're told that he hung himself, also in a fit of depression, concerned about the possibility of a long jail term sentence. He asked his fiance to marry him just two months before his death, two months after federal prosecutors came after him with ridiculously trumped up charges for downloading files from MIT, which neither the repository nor local law enforcement wanted to prosecute. And the prosecutor, Carmen Ortiz's husband, had tweeted that he had refused a plea bargain for just a three-month sentence. Or look at the improbable details in Michael Hastings' death in a car explosion. He was being pursued by the NSA and the FBI for a story that he was writing and had warned colleagues that they would be questioned. And then there's the JFK assassination, where the lies are even more obvious after 50 years. But of course, if you question any of these improbable stories, you're labeled a conspiracy theorist and told to shut up. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll see you again here Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. Thanks for watching. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. It is the 15th day of November 2013. Seven days from now, I will be broadcasting live from outside Dealey Plaza. Because no one who doesn't agree with the official story, including Dan Rather, I've read, uh, are allowed into the kill zone. Uh, the, the people that killed Kennedy and the power structure that killed Kennedy to bring in the black ops CIA offshore banking coup d'etat are going to be there trying to prop up the collapsed facade that is the official story of what happened to John F. Kennedy in 1963 on November 22nd. We've won the info war when it comes to exposing that it was a black op. The average poll is 90% or higher, scientific poll, believing that there is a conspiracy and a cover-up.
Congress back in the 70s found with a 99% certainty, that's the quote, that it was a multi-shooter conspiracy from the acoustics and witnesses to kill John F. Kennedy. Now, you know that the Warren Commission covered it up years before and was filled with people that were enemies of Kennedy. And we know they killed his brother. And the police department report says that Sirhan Sirhan got his arm pinned. None of the shots went into John F. Kennedy's brother, Bobby Kennedy. The list goes on and on. The establishment assassinated two people that actually tried to be real presidents. One who became president, was a real president, certainly not perfect. I don't romanticize him, had his own gangster tendencies. The other one tried to become president and said that once he did, he was going to go after him. And that's all on record. They think you're stupid, just like they think you wouldn't read Obamacare and they could get it through. And you, folks didn't read it, but now they know it's a screw job. It's on record how they killed Kennedy, and it's on record how they killed his brother, the younger Kennedy. But that's not why I'm going to Dallas next Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because they're going to continue the propaganda the next day. They would never give any other group the Dealey Plaza Park. They would never give a, a historical group, a research group, a permit to hold a demonstration or rally there. And they have the school book building as a giant propaganda center of lies and deception and fraud. They've rolled out everyone from Bugliosi to Tom Hanks to try to prop up the collapsed Humpty Dumpty that's in a million pieces. And all the king's horses and all the king's men and all the propagandists can't put their asinine lie back together again. Then they march the patsy out. Lee Harvey Oswald, I'm a patsy. They're setting me up. Don't let them kill me. March him outside. <laughs> And then they marched the Marine out to kill him. Another Timothy McVeigh, literally. A military officer, believing he was deep cover infiltration of communists in plots to kill Kennedy so they could set him up and blame communists if they wanted to. But then they used the threat against the Russians for concessions that we're going to set you up with our double agent that we sent to Russia and allowed back in, run by white Russians here in the U.S., that doesn't mean white people, folks. No, every time I talk about black slavery, white slavery, people don't even know the different types. It have nothing to do with black people or white people. Uh, same thing with white Russians. It just means pro-czarist. But, but the issue is, is that if you know the history, they 100% set him up and then killed him publicly. He was the patsy part of the drill. <laughs>